Welcome everybody. Today what we're going to discuss is how you can use perpendicular bisectors in order to solve problems. And you see that that's the goal for this section right here. In our most recent video we got done talking about mid-segments of triangles. The perpendicular bisectors are the next kind of segment that we're going to be focusing on. And I want to begin by talking about what a perpendicular bisector is just in a normal setting um, when we're not even talking about triangles. And then we'll build our way up to where we are actually talking about perpendicular bisectors of triangles maybe towards the end of this video but definitely in the next video because we're going to have two on this section. Okay, a perpendicular bisector of a segment is exactly what it sounds like. You know that if two things are perpendicular they form right angles and you know that a bisector cuts something in half. Well, a perpendicular bisector is going to be a line or a ray or a segment that is perpendicular to a segment such as the one that you see drawn and it bisects that segment. Alright, so if I were to try to draw a perpendicular bisector for this segment, the first thing I'd have to do is locate the midpoint and so here's the midpoint right here and then what I'd have to do is I'd have to draw a line or line segment just some kind of linear thing that goes through that midpoint and is perpendicular. All right, so say I was to name that original segment, segment AB, with the A there and B there, then what I'm telling you is that since this line that I'll call L goes through the midpoint of 7AB and it's perpendicular to 7AB, that makes it a perpendicular bisector. I believe that definition makes sense to you there. Now what we're interested in is what are some properties that perpendicular bisectors have. Whenever a line is a perpendicular bisector, there's got to be something special about it. Well, there is. There's a couple of theorems that we're going to be looking at in this video. And I'm not going to tell you what they are, but we're going to go ahead and prove one of them right now without you knowing what they are. You see here that I've got a triangle where I'm saying that segment NQ right here is the perpendicular bisector of segment LM. And what I'm wanting you to do is prove something that sounds funny right now, but it's pretty logical. I want you to prove that N is equidistant from L and M. Now, what would that word equidistant mean? Well, equal distances, right? So basically, I want us to prove that the distance from N to L has to be equal to the distance from N to M since 7NQ is the perpendicular bisector of 7LM. Okay, well, let's formulate a strategy here. If we're going to show that the distance from N to L equals the distance from N to M, well, we're going to do what we were doing in the previous chapter. We're going to look for congruent triangles to help us prove that those two distances are equal to one another. In other words, we're going to use CPCTC at some point. Now, what point is that and how do we get there? Well, let's go ahead and mark the information that's given to us. Because of the perpendicular bisector, we know that segment LQ is congruent to segment MQ, and we know that we've got a pair of right angles there because, well, perpendicular lines form up to four right angles if they go all the way through one another. So, here's our strategy then. We're going to prove that triangle LQN is congruent to triangle MQN by side angle side. You see one pair of congruent sides, the right angles here have to be congruent to one another, and of course we can use the reflexive property to prove that segment QN is congruent to itself. Then, and I'll mark this in a different color, then we'll be able to prove what I'm making in red right here is true by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. In fact, if you know how to write this proof, try it on your own, then come back and see what I've done. 
Now, so far, I've written the given information that segment NQ is a perpendicular bisector of segment LM, and we want to see what conclusions we can make on that. And well, there's two things that the a perpendicular bisector tells us about a segment. It tells us that it divides one segment into two. Okay, so we can conclude that segment LQ is congruent to segment MQ because of this fact. And it tells us that there are right angles involved, doesn't it? So we'll be able to say angle MQL and angle N or LQN are both right angles because of this perpendicular bisector. Now those follow for the same reason, and so I'm going to give them in the same statement. Now what's the reason that we know that these segments are congruent and that these two angles are right angles over here? Well, I said it's because we know there's a, a perpendicular bisector. And what I'm trying to get you to understand then is that we're using the definition of a perpendicular bisector in order to make that conclusion. All right, so the next step in our proof, remember we're trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent and we have, well, a couple things to do before we're able to do that. I've shown you that there's one pair of congruent sides so far and that there's right angles, but we have to prove that those right angles are congruent. Easily done. And of course, we need to prove that the second pair of sides are going to be congruent so we can use SAS. Well, let's go for the angles right now. Angle LQN is congruent to angle MQN because right angles are congruent. And segment QN is congruent to segment QN because of the reflexive property. And we've got our side angle side right here. So triangle LQN is congruent to triangle MQN based on side angle side. All right, now our goal was, of course, to prove that N is equidistant from L and M. And so we needed to be able to say this in order to say that. We need to be able to say that segment NL is congruent to segment NM, which we can now say is true because of because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. And then finally, I mean you could say that that's sufficient actually for this proof, but I want to phrase the final statement the way it's written in what you're trying to prove, the proof statement. So I can say that N is equidistant from L and M, Now I'm using the fact that the distance from N to L is congruent to the distance from N to M to make that conclusion. So I'm using the definition of the word equidistant to go from this statement to this statement. Okay, so what was the point of that whole exercise? Well, what we just did is what I alluded to earlier. We proved a theorem, the theorem that happens to be called the perpendicular bisector theorem, which I'm going to be teaching you right now. And here's what the perpendicular bisector theorem says. If you have a perpendicular bisector of a segment, which let's say we have there with L, whenever you see that these two segments are congruent and there's a right angle, that means segment L or line L is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. If you have a perpendicular bisector of a segment, <clears throat> you can pick any point that lies on the perpendicular bisector. Let's say we put a point right here. And it's guaranteed that that point will be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment that's being bisected. So this point, which let's just call that C, has to be equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB just because it lies on the perpendicular bisector. And can't you see how you could use side angle side to prove that the two triangles that I just formed were congruent, which would make AC and BC congruent parts of corresponding triangles? All right. Now, I don't care where you put the point along this perpendicular bisector. Any point on this perpendicular bisector was going to be equidistant from A and B. Let me just draw one more pair just to emphasize that. Let's say we put a point D over here. That's on the perpendicular bisector. And the distance from D, let me label that, to B is the same as the distance from D to A. All right, so listen to me carefully here. 
if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. There you go. I'll put that in terms of what I've drawn in the picture here. Since L is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB, then we can say that the distance from C to A equals the distance from C to B, and the distance from D to A equals the distance from D to B, and truly, the distance from any point on line L to A and B is going to be the same. All right, that's a perpendicular bisector theorem. Now let's put that into practice. By the way, before I do the putting it into practice, the converse is, is true as well. Anytime you can show that one point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, that means if you were to draw the perpendicular bisector, this point would lie on that perpendicular bisector. So there's the perpendicular bisector theorem, then there's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, We'll be using both in the next couple of examples, well, throughout the course of the next couple of examples, we'll use each, is what I should say. All right, what I'd like us to do is to find the values of the variables in this picture. And, well, we need to analyze the picture a little bit. The one thing I need you to notice here is these markings that you see that indicates that segment PQ is the perpendicular bisector of segment RS. All right. And you can see I've got X, Y, and Z for us to find. Well, we're simply going to apply the perpendicular bisector theorem here in order to find out what each of these variables are. And since we know that segment PQ is a perpendicular bisector and P is on that perpendicular bisector, well, that would mean that P is equidistant from the endpoints R and S. So PR equals PS. And that tells me that 24 equals to 7x minus 11. And if you add 11 to 24, you get 35. Divide 35 by 7, you get 5. That tells me X is equal to 5. Well, what about Y? This point T is also on the perpendicular bisector of segment RS. In fact, it's the point of intersection for, the, for those two segments. And it has to be equidistant from R and S. It is the midpoint of them after all, right? So we could say that TR equals TS. Meaning that 4Y would equal Y plus 6. And that would give you 3y equals 6, y is equal to 2. All right, and then finally, point Q also lies on that perpendicular bisector for segment RS, so the distance from it to R has to be equal to the same as the distance from it to S, correct? Those two distances are going to be the same. So we can set z over 2. equal to z minus 7, and let's multiply both sides by 2, you get z is equal to 2z minus 14. So negative z equals negative 14, and that tells me that z is equal to positive 14. All right, so any point on a perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. I think we've got that covered by now. Let's look at that from the opposite perspective. Here I've got a picture in which we're going to try to determine whether the points P and Q lie on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Now you can see that I drew this line here. I didn't label L or M or N or anything, but at any rate, that line is clearly marked as the perpendicular bisector of this segment AB, isn't it? And I would like to know essentially then if I were to continue this line this direction, and I were going to continue that line this direction, would it go exactly through P, and would it go exactly through Q? Now, we're using the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem to determine this. We can conclude 
that either of these points is on that perpendicular bisector as long as they're equidistant from the endpoints of the segment of bisects, which is segment AB. Now, one of those points is going to be on the bisector, the other one would not be. And I hope that you can tell that it's P that would not be, because P is not the same distance from A as it is from B. However, Q is the same distance from A as it is from B, so it would lie on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Let me write this out. P is not on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB since it's not equidistant from A to B, which we can indicate by just saying that the distance from P to A is not equal to the distance from P to B. All right. However, Q is on the perpendicular bisector because QA equals QP or QB. There you go. That's how you use the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Next video for this section, we'll be looking at perpendicular bisectors drawn from each of the three sides of a triangle and the properties that are a part of that kind of situation. All right. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you've learned a lot. I will see you next time.